What is up gamers and welcome back to more Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. I just want to point out that I have redeemed myself already. That's right. We have reclaimed the Sableye and the Hypno. Uh, or wait, it was the Primeape. The Primeape! That's the one I failed. Um, Primeape's almost purified, so that's cool. Uh, I also want to mention that this thing's really neat. It also shows you which Pokeball you caught them in and where they are at the current moment. Um, I mean, it's not really useful for too much, unless you, like, lost them somehow. You're like, where did I put this Pokemon? But, uh, I think it's neat. I've also stocked up on items. I want to point out that Gadion uh, Port's Pokemart has been upgraded, and now it sells, like, basically everything you could want. Ultra Balls, Hyper Potions, Max Potions, Full Restores, everything, which is very convenient since it's the closest Pokemart to this location. So that's cool. If you want some of the more specialized Pokeballs, though, you do have to go to the uh, outskirt stand, because that's where they sell net balls, nest balls, timer balls, that kind of stuff. And I have purchased a, a couple uh, a couple of timer balls, a couple of net balls. There are some Pokemon coming up that are water and bug types, so the net balls should be nice. And uh, timer balls are great because oftentimes, not always, but Oftentimes they'll send out their shadow Pokemon as their like last Pokemon and in those cases like the timer ball It's already been cooking for quite a decent number of turns, so I think for the, the end bosses especially timer balls are really great Although I, I was still hurting on money and I don't really want spike cannon So I'm not gonna teach that But yeah, the timer balls will especially be good in the end game for sure. But yeah, in the meantime, we're just gonna keep on trekking up. Oh, badly poison. I forgot that it... Poison Fang does badly poison. Uh, oh, I guess Shadow Ball's pretty good. Yeah, the nice thing about Overheat on Flareon as well is that it's also got a physical move, so... Even after we overheat, it's not completely neutered in terms of power. Another thing I should point out is that I believe at this point we have unlocked every move tutor move from that lady in the cave back at uh, Agate Town or Village, where, where the heck it's called. <laughs> that place. And there's some pretty interesting moves. The big one is like self-destruct, which is crazy. And I think I'm probably going to go back there at some point and teach Self-Destruct to Cloyster, actually, because it can learn it. And let's be honest, like, Takedown is not doing it any favors. I'm probably never going to use that move. And, you know, being a Stone Evolution Pokemon, it's not going to be learning anything really leveling up that I'm aware of. So I think that would help kind of complete its moveset. We got a couple Pokemon with Protect. So, like, you know, it's got the synergy. And, again, something for, like, the endgame fights I think is just, like, crazy. Because you can sometimes just delete two of their Pokemon at once. But, yeah, maybe not so useful at this point since we're still fighting a lot of weaker peons in these early levels of this place. Uh, Level-wise, I mean... Everyone's almost around the same level. Obviously, I got some EXP from the doing a couple more Colosseums, because Mirror B, of course, had to fight him two more times. And both times he spawned at the Real Gam Tower, which is the higher level one. All the Pokemon there are level 40, so I got quite a lot of EXP doing that. Five Ultra Balls! Yeah, I mean, XD chests are already super generous. And now that we're in the final area with, the, like, the best chests, we're going to get some crazy items. Uh, we're going to ignore that guy for now and go fight this uh, optional trainer over here and get this item. Yeah, look, three hyper potions. It's crazy. I imagine you're a trainer. Oh, she's changing into her cypher up. Okay, see ya. Nice of this guy to just wait for us in front of the elevator instead of jumping out from the ceiling. Good old Litnar, you know, he, he's doing things the normal way, like a reasonable human being. 
Uh oh, this actually makes me nervous. Electrode Mischievous? Are we gonna get some explosion action going on? Unfortunately, I don't really have a way to stop that. Let's just try and do some big spread damage with Helping Hand Surf. Or not! <laughs> Light screen, okay. Maybe it's gonna set up screens and then blow up. You know, not the worst strategy ever, honestly. I still did a lot, though. should be able to use Shadow Ball that oh yeah Electrode one of the fastest Pokemon at this point in the series so I, I kind of should have seen this one coming <laughs> all right let's let's get Don Fan out here this mischievous is not gonna last this turn hopefully he'll send out something also weak to ground that would be very convenient That is the opposite. That is a Levitate Pokemon. Great. <sighs> I still want an Earthquake, but now I don't think I can because I was going to switch Flareon for Togetic. But now with Claydol on the field, I really just want to use Shadow Ball on it. I mean, Electrode's pretty frail, so Body Slam should be a decent move. Ooh, that Shadow Ball just straight up knocked it out. I'm actually kind of surprised. Uh, Claydol's seven levels lower? Less than some of these others have been. Oh, this should be a Shadow Pokemon. So, you know, more Gen 1 Pokemon, of course. But what I like is that a lot of Pokemon around this point are going to be Pokemon that are hard to obtain. And what I think is interesting about the Pokemon they chose to be Shadows in XD, you know, I don't know for a fact. But to me, it comes off as they wanted to pick Pokemon that would help you complete the Pokedex, because completing the National Dex in Gen 3 is quite difficult compared to other Gens, because you need so many games. And uh, they wanted to reward people like, hey, you, you purchased Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, we're gonna help you out. All those, like, annoying to catch Safari Zone Pokemon are just all in the end game of this game. So, like, easy way to catch Kangaskhan. And again, if you, if you really care about, like, Pokemon being in certain Pokeballs kind of a thing, this is the only way to get a lot of these Pokemon in something other than a Pokeball or Safari Ball in this gen. Of course, I, I think most people probably don't care about that, but I thought I'd bring it up because I, I think it's cool. I don't really have a good way of weakening these guys. Is Light Screen still up? I wasn't paying attention. If Light Screen's still up, then, like, Overheat would be fine. But I'm, I'm actually probably just going to have to switch into something. Probably Oog, because Thunderbolt. I'm actually, I'm super glad I taught Thunderbolt, because it's also, like, not a move that's very strong on your boy Oog. So I can actually use it to weaken some of these shadows. But, uh, yeah, let's give, let's give the reviews of the Pokemon. Kangaskhan is, like, our 80th normal type. It's, you know, compared to stuff like Zangoose, I'd still say it's probably a little worse than Zangoose. It's bulkier, which is cool. And honestly, like, Kangaskhan stats aren't that bad. It's definitely usable, but it also just, like, doesn't super stand out in any one area kind of a thing. As for Bayonet, though, this is a Pokemon I really like. I think I foreshadowed there would be a Pokemon in here that I think is really cool for, um, for a late-game team member in this game. And Bayonet is great. It gets Helping Hand once it's purified, which is, of course, great. I think... It I think it already comes with Shadow Ball as well. Of course, even if it doesn't, we have the TM. And Shadow Ball being physical is great for Bayonet. It's got a high attack stat. So it can dish out a lot of damage with Shadow Ball, and then it can support the team with Helping Hand. And like I mentioned, we have access to Self-Destruct now. A lot of random Pokemon can learn that. If you pair it with a Self-Destruct or an Explosion user, it's amazing. You get that... Like, you're just going to one-shot even, like, bulky Steel types. They're just going to get eviscerated, and Bayonet being Ghost type... It can just helping hand, it doesn't have to protect. I used that combo alongside Claydol in a playthrough, and it was 
just the most broken thing ever, probably. Like, it, it was not fair at all. Any Pokemon in the game that wasn't a ghost type, if I didn't want it to be on the field anymore, it didn't have to be on the field. I think after this battle, I'm actually going to use a TM on Breloom. It's another thing I forgot to mention. While I was doing those Mirror B fights, uh, I got some more prizes for clearing Real Game Tower a couple of times. And I picked up the TM for Giga Drain that way. So just kind of a strict upgrade over Mega Drain other than, than the PP. But unfortunately, Giga Drain is very bad this gen. It's only 60 power. But, you know, it's better than the 40 power that Mega Drain is, so... <laughs> because look how little this is doing. Like, I, I want it to be used as a chip move to weaken these Pokémon, but... At this point, Giga Drain also wouldn't be KOing it. It'd actually be doing a reasonable amount of damage, at least. Oog is just getting destroyed. Poor Oog. Uh, what's an out Togetic? I guess we'll, we'll Mega Drain Kangaskhan one more time. Of course, uh, if anyone anyone will know from trying to catch Kangaskhan in the Safari Zone, its catch rate is not very high. So it's probably going to take a few times. We got the Para, though. That's nice. You know, what, what I can say about Kangaskhan is that it actually is quite solid. And, like, Gens 1, 2, and 3... Like, a lot of people oftentimes just think it was really bad until it got its Mega, but in the early gens, it actually is quite good. It's just got a well-rounded amount of stats. And on a normal type, that's not terrible. Uh, I guess I'll just throw some Ultra Balls while I weaken it. Cool. I wasn't sure how hard it was to catch Bayonet. I can't really be caught in the wild in this game other than this one. And our Primeape is ready to be purified. Cool, I'm gonna go back and heal. Now, while I'm doing this though, I, I want to mention catch rates in the Shadow Pokemon games. I don't think it's ever been definitively said if they're boost it or not, but I get the feeling that most of them seem to me to be pretty normal, but the exception is definitely the, the like catch rate 3 Pokemon, like mostly the legendaries. From watching other people play Coliseum and myself playing that game, the Raikou, Entei, and Suicune just feel way too easy to catch. Like, they they can't be catch rate 3, there's no way. There, there has to be something going on under the hood to make those Pokemon easier to catch. Which makes sense, because like when you get to Entei, I don't even think you can buy Ultra Balls yet. And it would just be a nightmare to try and catch that thing in the early game. Unless it was boosted. They have like the Legendary Birds towards the end of this game. I usually don't have that much trouble catching them. Like yeah, it, it takes a few tries, but not as much as it does when I'm playing like Fire Leaf Green or something. We gotta talk to the Sus guy again. But, you know, maybe this is all just fake and it's just some, like, confirmation bias getting lucky or something. But I feel like I've seen enough people play the game where they've also, like, not had as much trouble catching them that something's up with the legendaries. Doctor, we can generate even bigger waves this way. Isn't it great? Yeah, so uh, this little machine down here, this thing is what is causing the storm. The storm that is protecting this place is not natural. It is... Created by this big storm machine in the middle of the island. Oh, now we've gotten into the volcanic part. Uh, Donwu with Syphet Egan. Uh, no message. Oh, we got another one. Down with Cypher! Dear Westbert, hello, this is my first email. I'm sorry I sent you an empty message by mistake. I also apologize for the misspellings. I'm embarrassed by these mistakes, and what- 
the email text just cut off. Well, you know, he tried. Classic boomers don't know how to use their phones. So now we're in the, like, volcanic part of the island. Deep into its core, and we gotta push these blocks to cut off the lava flow. Get two revives. Funny enough, that's probably the worst chest so far, and it's not even bad. Ah, uh, we have another block. But it didn't do a whole lot. We gotta push this other block down. And uh, being in this volcanic area should become should be of no surprise that we're about to run into some fire type shadow Pokemon in here. A lot of the the remaining fire type Gen One Pokemon that we haven't encountered yet, especially, are gonna be around here. One last block. Perfect. I'm surprised they, they built their, their, their base in a volcano. So, you know, if, if it erupts, they're freaking dead, but... Uh, you gotta live on the edge, you know. You know, Cypher's not like those other evil teams. Actually, two, what the, two white herbs? What the heck? That's usually an item you only ever get, like, one of, and then if to get more, you have to spend battle points. They just gave us two. That's a, yeah, it's a really good item. There aren't a lot of good items in Gen 3, so, like, White Herb, honestly, one of the better ones. Of course, it is a single-use item, so I'm just gonna save it for post-game stuff, but... Uh, getting two of them? I'm pretty happy about that. Ooh, this duo should be quite good here. We can just spam Helping Hand, Surf on all these fire types, and then Flareons can Flash Fire. Ooh, that nine tails. Yeah, my my team being very slow is showing as my opponents have been catching up to my levels. Both of his Pokemon are faster than mine. <laughs> but this will probably just knock out both of them, I imagine. Oh, maybe not nine tails. Nine tails does have a lot of special defense. I think it's the best stat. Even that, I think it's only like 100, but it's probably good enough. Yeah, Nine Tails is kind of unfortunate. Its stat spread is... It's that, none of its stats are really that decent, unfortunately. Cool Pokemon, though. Uh, I think they went a little overboard in buffing it, though. I, uh, I'll be honest, I was not a fan of when they just started giving the weather abilities to... Random Pokemon. I kind of like... Like, the sun and rain are so much better than, like... Well, I don't know. Sandstorm's crazy. Even Tyrantar. I'm actually... I don't know if this is a hot take. I don't like the weather abilities. I think weather's effects are so crazy, you should be forced to manually set it up. And here we have one of our Gen 1 fire types, Magmar. Magmar's a really solid Pokemon. Obviously, it can't fully evolve into Magmortar, because Magmar doesn't exist. But even without that, like, Electabuzz and Magmar stats are really good. Um, but I am very biased, because I am a huge Electabuzz and Magmar fan, and I use them a lot, even in the games where they can't evolve. Uh, and I think Magmar, it's really good. Oh, importantly, this Magmar here actually has a special move that it can only get from this game. And that move is Follow Me. And there's, there's a little bit of interesting competitive Pokemon history to this Magmar, because... Some, I forget who it was. Was it Ray Rizzo? I don't know. Some prominent player got really far at Worlds in, like, the Black 2, White 2 era using Follow Me Magmar. Like, the one from XD. Which is cool. Now, 
Uh, did he actually get it from XD? I don't want to get into this can of worms. My going theory is that the Magmar probably was not legitimately captured in XD, but I also don't think the person who used it knew that. Uh, from what I understand, like, competitive players, especially back in those days, would often just trade Pokemon between each other a lot, and a lot of times there was no way of knowing, like, like, obviously if somebody genned in the Pokemon properly, you wouldn't be able to tell. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's not like it actually matters, as long as the Pokemon didn't have, like, modified, cheated, like, 1 billion base HP Magmar, but obviously that'd be really easy to catch anyway. But yeah, because it's so impossible to, to soft reset for, like, IVs and natures in this game that, like, there's no way that that Magmar was just legitimately perfect IVs, you know, you know what I'm saying? But again, I'm not blaming the, I'm not trying to call it the player, because I, I feel like there's a 99% chance that he was given it to him by some random person who was like, yeah, I definitely uh, soft reset for this at XD, you gotta trust me, bro. I remember back during the Gen 5 era, when people would like, because the hack checks for like online, obviously Pokemon still has a huge problem with like, like now like wonder trades and stuff are just filled with Pokemon whose names are like the names of websites where you pay real money to hack in Pokemon, which is insane. Like just do it yourself for free. People are spending actual money for Pokemon, like $5 to get, po what? This is like some dystopian world we are living in, that this is a thing. <laughs> it is insane to me that people pay to get hacked in Pokemon, especially with how easy it is to get perfect IVs now with the bottle caps, especially the way they work in Scarlet and Violet. But no, people are still spending their real hard-earned money to get hacked digital Pokemon whose names are websites. But anyway, that was a tangent from... But back in the day, people would always, like, screw up the genning process. You'd go on, like, online battles, and Pokemon's names would, like, be all glitched and, like, over the character limit. I remember running into that all the time back in Gen 5. Uh, good times. Anyway, I completely ignored Pinsir. Pinsir is pretty bad. <laughs> Unfortunately, eh, it doesn't have any good moves. It's just going to be using, like, fighting and normal moves. Not even stab. Pinsir gets a huge glow up the next gen when moves like X Scissor become a thing that exists. Even then, it's still not like a top Pokemon, but at least it has like a stab move. But I don't want to like discount Pinsir completely. I've used it in Gen 3 before, and it's not awful. I mean, its stats are like fine enough to carry it, even if it doesn't have any stab moves, but it's also like, you know, you can't really recommend it over something like an actual fighting type, because it's going to get the stab bonus, and there's a, I think coming up pretty soon while well, everything is ready to be purified, pretty soon there's going to be, oh my gosh, I used, this always happens, I never remember where the healing machines are in this place. So I use my healing items, and then there's a healing machine. Yeah, don't get too worried. This isn't like, you know, a Victory Road situation. This place is massive and very long, but there are frequent healing machines and PCs. So, that's at least very nice. But yeah, there are, there are a couple of decent fighting types coming up. So, if you're still looking for late game party members, and you didn't grab, like, Primeape, like, Hariyama early on, there's still some pretty cool options in here. Oh, this person's team is annoying. Uh, thankfully, it's not going to be that annoying with the Pokemon I led with, but uh, they got double Intimidate going on here. The classic. But we'll just do the Surf Helping Hand combo. Pretty big damage. Oh, Reflect too. Yeah, the trainer's difficulty has definitely gone up. They have, like, strategies and 
good moves. Don't know about Howl. I mean, it's Mighty Anna. It doesn't have a good move pool. Mighty Anna is currently my only shiny Pokemon. Oh, I... That's not what I meant to do. <laughs> Helping hand spikes, let's go. Talking and playing is hard, all right. Yeah, Mighty Anna is my only shiny in Gen 3 right now. Not the only shiny I've ever gotten in Gen 3. I've actually gotten a decent amount, but I, it, as a kid, I transferred them, so they're not on Gen 3 anymore. But I have a shiny Mighty Anna, and it's very cool. I, I like Mighty Anna shiny a lot. Like, it's not a rare shiny to get in Gen 3, because it's on so many routes, but the gold looks really nice on it. I don't really want to just use a move, because... They're probably going to switch into a Shadow Pokemon. Eh, they got five Pokemon. We'll, we'll send the Shadows out last. Oh, or... I forgot Flareon's faster. Well, this... Ah, this works out! Yeah, the, the convenient thing about the PCs being around here is that we can access our purification chambers and put all the new Pokemon we caught in them. Yeah, that's uh, not a shadow. We already have that. No, that isn't either. Okay. Two Pokemon we've already had access to for quite a while. Uh... Maybe I'll Surf Overheat and just get rid of Sharpedo for sure. Oh, wow. Well, I... <laughs> uh, well, you know, hopefully the Pokemon that gets sent in isn't going to get one-shot by Surf. Oh, this person doesn't have any Shadow Pokemon. I thought because they were required in their Cypher person that they would definitely have something. Why is it... <laughs> Why is the Sunfloor level 34? <laughs> So much lower level than their other Pokemon. What's up with that? I think Sunflower is kind of underrated for single player. Because its special attack set is like 105, which. That's like better than Ninetales' special attack. I even used it as like a late game team member in Coliseum, where I'd kind of built my team around being a Sun team, which is great for Sunflower with like Solar Beam Chlorophyll. It actually hit really hard. I actually like using it a lot. But even in other games, like, I've used it in Silver version, and I thought it was honestly fine. It gets Petal Dance, which is like 70 power. That's the best you're going to get for Grass-type moves in that game. And with its 105 special attack stat, it actually hit really hard. You can catch Sunkern really early in Black 2, White 2, which is always a funny little thing. The problem in that game, though, is that you can't get the Sunstone until Nimbasa City, I think? And Sun Card is one of those Pokemon that doesn't learn enough moves leveling up to where you'd want to wait to evolve it. You just want its stats to actually be usable. So, it's a little worse in Black 2, White 2 just because you're stuck with the bad stats for so long. Alright, let's place some of these guys in here. Bayonet's got the spell tag, and then... Perfect, it's all filled, although... I'll have to go back and purify some more Pokémon in between episodes. But, it's a good saving point. Yeah, I purified a lot of Pokémon off-screen as well, so... Uh, I'm not gonna have to spend a lot of time, I don't think, in the post-game to get everything purified for the, the 100%. So that's gonna be nice. Dear Westbird, I hope you're well. I wrote you a haiku poem. If Team Snagum goons cause trouble in the desert, go and sandbag them. Beautiful. Truly, truly a work of art, Egan. What is happening? Is that... Are they going to push them into the lava? Am I am I witnessing an execution? Yeah, I remember this room. Uh, I think one of these trainers has a Waylord. And I always thought it was goofy looking alongside all the fire. Oh, and I am now reminded that uh, I should teach my Pokemon the move I said I was going to teach it. Yeah, here's the Giga Drain TM. Uh, Muck learns Giga Drain, which is neat, but it already has Thunderbolt for water types, so... I'd rather just... Yeah, 40 versus 60. Yeah, it's 20 more power. Uh, 
Only 5 PP, but oh well. Let's fight you first. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I know these people are optional, but like... I didn't know they were this optional. <laughs> That's so weird. Like, her dialogue may sound like, Oh, you, you dummy, this is a dead end. Now you get to fight me, but... I, I didn't have to fight you. Also, Dust Ox beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I'm remembering why this place always stood out to me. There's just a bunch of Pokemon that don't fit the volcano aesthetic at all. Not a good matchup for Breloom. Was not expecting to fight a bunch of bug types. I might have to go back into Flareon. I was expecting to run into that Waylord trainer. There's gonna be several aesthetics going through this place. Like we had the, the storm machine area, now we're in the volcano. And this is only the beginning. Yo, Silverwind, that's like the best bug move in this game. <laughs> is it gonna get the boosts? It did not get the boosts. Unfortunate. I guess the best bug move is actually hidden power, because it can go up to 70 power in this game, but you need specific IVs for that, so like, it's not really realistic. Illumise, what, what is this team? And Volbeat, okay, they got... A bunch of bugs and then I guess a flower to so they can poll pollinate get the po I guess I guess that's the that's the lore that's the, <laughs> the the team lore for this trainer you know with the effects of the lava like making Ilumise look reddish I thought it was more Signal Beam! I forgot about Signal Beam! That's actually probably the actual best bug move in this game, but like, very few Pokemon learn it. It's like Volbeat, Ariados gets it, the reg move. That's like it. I don't know. I don't know if any other bug types get it. Oh, I guess the real best bug move is Mega Horn, but Heracross is the only bug type that learns that. Every other Pokemon that gets it is not bug. It's like Rhydon, Nidoking. Really good move. But, yeah, just another reason why Heracross is, like, by far the best bug type for, like, two gens straight. Because, whoa, it actually has a stab move. Who would have thought that that would make bug types decent? Flatter. Flatter, Flatter's a weird move. Because unlike Swagger, it doesn't, like, the, the, the boost to special attack doesn't make them do more damage to themselves. But I also get what it's supposed to be doing. You're supposed to, like, use it on your partner that's immune to confusion to, like, give them a nasty plot. But yeah, in single battles, it's, it's just, like, worse Confuse Ray at that point. Well, we defeated one of the teams of all time, truly. That Flareon level up. You know, it's not that slow, <laughs> I guess. Wow, well, only 720. Hoping to get some more money, because again, I am running out. So this guy actually stops us. I don't know what that other girl's deal was. Ooh, two, two explodey boys. Another Pokemon that I want Flareon for. I, the second I move Flareon out of the lead, I just fight a million Pokemon that Flareon would be really good for, but... Oh well. I'm just trying to double-team Fortress to try and chip away at that defense. 
I love the way it spins back into the back into its place. Yeah, Fortress is like I see people use it in Coliseum all the time, but no one ever uses the Pine Cone in XD. And I imagine that's just because like with how limited your options are in Coliseum, Fortress actually looks good. But in this game you have so many options that a lot of people don't bother with Fortress, which I get. It's not a... It's like decent for living forever, but I wouldn't say it's an especially fun Pokemon to use. Looks cool though, big fan of its design. Hmm. I can't switch because of Shadow Tag, I imagine. Yeah, that's that kind of sucks. I just hope I don't get mirror coded, I guess. Shadow Tag is just such an insane ability, and it just gets even better in doubles. It's, it's so good. Destiny Pond. Oh, of course it's gonna try and do that. Okay. In that case, I will just double team Dodrio. Alright, hopefully they switch into something weak to Ice Beam. I mean, something that I seem is like decent against. Should do a lot of damage. Almost got the knockout. It's got that sturdy before sturdy was buffed. All right, Boba Fett. What? A, we'll, we'll we'll take you out. I don't care if I go down with you. Oh sevens in chat. Cloyster truly taken one for the team. Given all the EXP to Braylon. Should get a lot too. Wild Fett's got a high HP stat. Wow, 1,300. No way! What do you have to say for yourself? Please go right through! I think I will, but not after going back and healing my Pokemon. But we gotta go, we gotta go through this hallway over here to get to the, the actual healing machine. There it is. I like that lava, it's pretty cool. I could be like the, the guy from Miiverse who would always comment nice water on everything. That guy's made a bigger cultural impact than like 99.9% 9 .9 of the human race. People still remember the, the Miiverse water guy to this day. It's gonna be like 3055 and we're still gonna be like, remember that guy who talked about the water? Also, there are even more trainers in here than we thought. We got coolest. He's like coolest. But not quite. Now that's what I like to see. Camera. The Pokemon actually fire. We can use Cloyster against. Breloom's still not very good, but you know, whatever. We'll just, we'll just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll weaken the wheezing up. It's gonna do so much damage. You know what? That's more than I expected. Now, will this person have a Shadow Pokemon? I'm actually not sure. Well, that's not one. We already got that one. He's got both Muck and Weezing. It's funny, because, like, Muck and Weezing are clearly supposed to be, like, a duo. They evolve at similar levels. One's got defense, the other's got special defense. But, like, Team Rocket had Weezing, but then the other one they had was Arbok. What is going on? <laughs> 
truly a missed opportunity. We should we should boycott Pokemon, I think, for that one. Yeah, like it took that surf way better than Weezing did. Look at that attack stat. Heck yeah, Mind Reader. Uh, it's funny with dynamic... Wait, no, Mind Reader... What, is, what does Mind Reader do? <laughs> That's one of those moves you never use. Oh no, this is a shadow. More Gen 1 fire types. Rapidash is not great. It's physical attacker and it really just gets fire moves. I think, I think it gets bounced by this gen, but even, I mean, bounce is not the best move ever. It's fast, and that's about the nicest thing I can say about it, because otherwise... It, it can't take advantage of its high attack stat. Cool Pokemon, though. I mean, I like Rapidash. It's neat. But it's... We just got Magmar, I think Magmar's just better. Especially because Magmar comes with Follow Me. That said, it is a lot faster than Magmar, so... You know, that's something. Cloyster's got 170 defense. <laughs> that's so much defense. Uh, another returning Shadow Pokemon from Coliseum. We have Mag... Cargo. This time at the end game instead of the early game. And yeah, it's got kind of the same problem. It's just late in the game at this point. You've had access to better options. Again, really like Mad Cargo. I think it's cool. And you could definitely try and use it. But it's just got a million weaknesses. And uh, we've just, we just have so many fire types at this point. Double defense harshly fall. That's a that's a pretty decent move. Ooh, yeah, that's gonna definitely cause some issues there. Well, I, th I thought it'd get the double knockout, but probably took it like a champ. Uh sure, we'll send out Togetic. With Togetic, we'll throw a ball. I don't think Mag Cargo is too difficult to catch. The battle's been going on for a little while, but I, I don't think Timer Ball is quite right yet. It's just that easy. Well, unfortunately, Prelum is probably not going to survive to weaken this Rapidash somewhere. You know what, I'm confident that uh, Thunderbolt won't kill, so let's go for a ball and Thunderbolt. This one's going to be a bit tougher. Shadow down. A lot of the Shadow Pokemon at this point, too, are going to have, like, three Shadow moves on their moveset. Whereas a lot of the earlier ones would just be spamming the same Shadow move over and over again. Alright, well, that went pretty well. He'll just follow me. And don't really want to attack it anymore because a crit will definitely KO. There we go. A 
I just can't battle in this wicked heat. Alright, you know what time it is. That's right. Time to go back to the healing machine. We're, we're slowly getting through this, this lava area. I think we... I'm trying to think if there are any other fire types I remember. I don't think there are. I think, I think we've got all of them now. At least in this section here. In fact, oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this. We can actually just check what we have to fight next. Right, the Hitmons. And then we should be just about done with the fire area then, because I remember Scyther not being in the fire. item over there but at the same time I, I don't oh well uh, <laughs> more cypher peons you know this is probably the correct way is what I'm thinking because this is where all the shadow Pokemon are so maybe I should go around the other way first another nine tails and a cacturn wonder if it's gonna use sunny day solar beam combos Though, I am going to try to prevent that. Hey look, Breloom can actually do something. Ooh, this is gonna be a meaty surf. Hey look, it's the... The duo of, uh... Drought Pokemon. In future gens. Yeah, if it wasn't bad enough that, like, Ninetales is already very mid, and then it finally got usage by having Drought, they just like, okay, now Torkoal gets it, and it has Eruption, so it's better. And then nobody used Ninetales ever again. Mantine. Unfortunately, we do not get Mantine in this game. Big Mantine fan. You know what? That is more than I expected that Surf to do, honestly. <laughs> Tropius. Now this person's got like a fire water grass core kind of a theme going on here. I guess we'll Giga Drain. Probably not gonna do a ton. It's the specially bulky behemoth that is Mantine. Yeah, no Shadow Tropius either. That was a Coliseum thing. No, the confusion. Unironically, Sky Uppercut might do more damage. But we'll never know. Give me that freeze. No, wing attack. Give me the Hex Spore. Doesn't look like we got that either. Alright, well that, that trainer was random. They didn't have any shadow Pokemon or anything. They just kind of wanted to make her life miserable. It's too hot in here. I can't focus my mind at all. 
Well, I think that's gonna do it. I was hoping to maybe get through this whole section of the fire lava world today, but and I think we've been gone, you know, we've gone on long enough, so I think I'm gonna call it here. Tune in next time, we'll finish up this little area and continue on Citadel Dark Isle. See ya!